Welcome to a brand new episode of This Week in Apps. I'm Ariel from App Figures, and I have a little bit of everything for you this week. Let's get started with a question I get asked very often. The debate between native and non-native development has been raging for years. Some believe native development is the only way to develop. Others prefer non-native for the convenience and the ability to ship across platforms more quickly. I personally fall somewhere in between, but what I have to share isn't my opinion, but rather numbers, which paint an interesting picture. And I say interesting because things changed in 2022. React Native is one of the most popular solutions for true non-native development. Using our SDK intelligence, which is available in Explorer, I looked at the number of new iOS and Android apps and games built with React Native released by year. If you're still with me, the popularity of React Native grew a lot in 2018. The number of apps and games built with React Native grew 111% by the end of that year. That's the beginning of what we're talking about here. The rates slowed down, but popularity continued to grow up double digits every year since, except for 2022. In 2022, the number of apps built with React Native dropped by 43%. In more absolute terms, 2021 saw 79,000 new apps and games with React Native, while 2022 saw just 45,000. And the downward trend was pretty consistent across both iOS and Android apps, so we know that it's not something specific. In last week's episode, I talked about how app releases dropped in 2022 across both platforms, and that's certainly a part of why non-native app releases dropped. But if you recall, releases dropped by about 12%, while React Native releases dropped by more than five times that. I think the drop isn't a coincidence. Both Apple and Google, Swift and Kotlin are hard at work to simplify native development, a trend I don't expect to stop anytime soon. Now, I know this raises more questions than it answers, there is so much to dig into with this data that I can do a whole episode just on that. If you want me to do that, leave a comment, let me know, and also tell me what kind of questions you have. And also subscribe to the channel so you know if I actually do it. Next up, Gas. Earlier this week, Gamer Chat Discord announced it's acquiring Gas, an app for teens that exploded in popularity a few months ago but dropped nearly as quickly as it rose. While high, the downloads don't paint a trend that's that exciting for an acquisition in my opinion, but Unlike other overnight successes we've seen come and go last year, Gas did something others didn't. And if you've been following me for long enough, you know exactly what I'm going to say. Gas actually made money, lots of money. Since launching last August, Gas managed to make its way into nearly 8 million iOS devices, earning $7 million of net revenue in the process, according to our estimates. And that's net, meaning what the small team behind the teen sensation got to keep after giving Apple its share and it's only Apple here because this is only an iOS app. I don't know why. The downloads are nice. The up and down trend is pretty standard for viral success. Being iOS only is a strange limitation that shouldn't exist at this point, but there are a couple of remarkable parts of this story that I believe led to the acquisition. The first is how Gas rose to the top of the App Store, which wasn't luck, but rather several very clever marketing campaigns that I consider to be borderline black hat, yet worked amazingly, both on teens and also on Apple's algorithms. The second is the app's ability to monetize. Most of the overnight successes we've seen in the last year got a lot of downloads, but most of those downloads just didn't turn into paying users. Some apps didn't have a revenue model to begin with. Others didn't have a good revenue model, and in both cases, being the top app for a little while just didn't do enough for the bottom line because of that. Gas was different. The app had exactly what kids wanted and made that very easy to purchase. That's super important. I think Discord acquired Gas's outspoken founder, Nikita. It's not that Discord needs a borderline black hat marketer or a limited social platform for teens, but at least one of those could be useful for growth, something Discord's apps didn't have too much of in 2022. Next up, we have to talk virtual reality. Christmas Day is an interesting day in the App Store and on Google Play. In addition to a bunch of Santa apps that rise to the top of the charts for a short period, we also get a glimpse into the popularity of tech gadgets that require an app to operate. Quest, Meta's virtual reality headset, has been one of the hottest gifts in recent years, and using app downloads as a proxy for unit sales, something you know I like to do, we can get an idea for just how popular VR was this holiday season. The answer is good and bad. Let me show you. According to our estimates, MetaQuest, the app necessary to set up a new VR headset, crossed 2 million downloads in December. And that's the first year downloads cross the 2 million mark. Woohoo! This should be good news for VR, especially for Meta, which suffered a lot in 2022, but it isn't exactly. See, while high, well, 
highest. Those downloads are just a teeny tiny higher than 2021's figures, which our estimates put at 1.97 million, just a rounding error away from 2022. Which means demand hasn't really grown. Maybe a bit, but when compared to the more than 100% growth Meta saw between 2020 and 2021, this new record seems more like bad news to me. There's a lot of talk recently about Apple's augmented reality hardware, and while it won't happen tomorrow, I'm pretty sure that will cause enough excitement that even VR will become more popular. We'll have to wait and see. My next insight isn't about growth. The end of crypto is here. Well, I'm not exactly sure about that. After all, Bitcoin did rise about 20,000 this week, but while some are still interested in crypto, the masses seem to have totally lost interest. That's very clearly visible when looking at demand for the top crypto buying apps. According to our estimates, collective downloads of the top crypto apps, which include Coinbase, Binance, Trust, and Crypto.com, dropped more than 65% between January and December of 2022. Coming off of a very strong 2021, apps in the collection made their way into more than 10 million devices in January, according to our estimates. Binance led the way with Trust behind it. But by the summer, new downloads dropped by nearly half, and in December, downloads reached a low point, dipping below 4 million for the first time this year. Binance again saw the steepest decline, but really every other app in this collection dipped throughout the year. 2000 crypto, this should make perfect sense, but that's exactly it. What apps like Coinbase almost managed to do, bring crypto to the masses, just almost happened, and then it didn't. And that's not something I see changing in crypto's favor anytime soon. NFTs aren't popular enough to meet this sort of demise, and I don't expect that to happen anytime soon either, but it's a trend I'm watching. And last for this week, I looked at the revenue of Snapchat Plus, the in-app purchase Snap is using to finally monetize its app by offering early access to features plus some customization options. I still see this whole thing as a glorified way to pay to become a beta tester for Snapchat, but regardless of what I think, it seems to be working. Let's start at the beginning. In its first month, Snapchat Plus earned more than $6 million of net revenue, and that to me was a huge surprise. Revenue dropped when renewal time came around, which is fairly normal for most apps, but has been climbing steadily, I would say, since. According to our estimates, December continued to see growth for Snapchat Plus, which has been on a positive trend since its first and only dropped back in August. In December, Snapchat Plus posted its highest revenue in a single month and also the highest growth in a single month. In more absolute terms, December brought in nearly $7 million of net revenue in month-over-month -month growth of nearly 25%. For context, last month growth was 12% and in the months before it, the average was just 2%. Clearly Snapchat Plus is working out for Snap and given this trend will probably be working even better in the future and I see it as a great sign for app makers. If Snapchat can get its free users to pay, so can you. If you are still leaning on ads to make money, now's a good time to think of more options. If you need help, leave a comment with what your app does and I'll tell you what I think. And that's all I have for you this week. I hope you learned something new. If you did, give the episode a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is a new one of these every week. I'll see you next week.